Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Danganronpa Tripper Happy Havoc. In the last episode, we began the game, and we and we were with Makoto walking right into Hope Speak Academy, getting ready to start our new our new uh, life as a student within the illustrious school. But upon entering the place, we found ourselves passing out and walking into some very re very surreal place that resembles a school, but, well, obviously isn't. At least not a normal one, anyway. We found a whole group of other students from Hope's Peak in Academy in there, just as confused as we are as to how why we ended up in such a place. And eventually, we were called by uh, who, we, who we soon discovered to be our captor, a, cre a uh, little robotic bear, that calls itself Monokuma. And what does Monokuma want from us exactly? Well, they, he gave us two choices. We can we can either live out our, the rest of our lives within the school that he's put us in, or if we want to leave, we have to kill one another. So, it's obvious that we're kind of in some kind of death game here. Now what, now, what the ultimate end goal of this death game is, well, we have a long way to go before we can figure out the answer to that. I can assure you that much. But right now, everybody is still kind of contemplating over what they learned from uh, the, the little assembly that they had, that Monokuma had for them in the gymnasium, and everybody is understandably on edge. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue, and then we'll get right back to where we last left off. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel a paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. Chapter 1. To Survive daily life. But as for heavy, but, but, for, but for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to pierce it was her sharp words. And? So, what are you going to do now? Hey. Just stand around glaring at each other. I don't know. You might find that standing around glaring at one another can be a very soul-enhancing experience for some people. Not for me personally, because I got better things to do, but apparently for some people it is. Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us all back into reality. <laughs> right. She's right. Listen to me! Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward! To forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed! Do you hear me? Please! Someone hit me! I can't forgive myself! Somebody hit me! Punish me! Well, there is bugle hair. Huh? Jesus. If you have some if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. You heard bugle hair? Punch yourself! However... Perhaps, but... What is the mission exactly? Stupid! Idiot! To look for a way out, duh! What the...? And we totally need to find who whoever was controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of him! But... but... But, but before we do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. Alright, so then... Fine. Then let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. Hope Speaks Academy eBook. Makoto Nayegi. After turning on my e-handbook, the first thing that appeared was my name. So just like Monokuma said, the owner's name showed up front and center. 
Then, from the main menu that popped up, I selected the school regulations icon. An itemized list appeared on screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the rules being imposed on us all. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving campus is an unacceptable use of time. Well, we're kind of trapped here, so how the fuck do you expect us to leave? Night time is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Number three. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. 4. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. 5. The violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. Unless they are discovered. Something that you should all keep in mind. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my fist up from the screen. My face, excuse me. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's faces. Stop fucking around! This is bullshit! What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me! Okay, then have a nice last few minutes of your life. <laughs> well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks one of the rules. Curls is bloodthirsty! Everyone make a mental note of that. However... But if he got punched like like what we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn point waiting for him. I'll call you Needle Hair. Or Tic, or tic Tac Hair. Yeah, yeah, Needle Hair, because your hair is kind of needle-like towards the end. It's got point to it. So we got Needle Hair, Bugle Hair, Curls... Yo. Got three different people who I've named after their hair. I... Ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. Honorable to a fault, huh? And... So what? Still... I don't know what to call you. I guess I could call you Freckles, in reference to your uh, face freckles. Not that there's anything wrong with those, I want to stress to anybody listening. Face freckles are totally fine. I don't know, I, unless I think of something better, I guess I'll just call you Freckles. What? I made a ton of promises that I still have to keep. So, that's so what? Piece of shit! So I can't afford to die in here! <sighs> None of that made much sense to me. But you are saying you will follow the regulations. Is that it? That's true. Huh? Uh, oh well. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um... Hey, um, I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student becomes a black one graduate unless they are discovered. Well, I think it means that, uh... Anyone who manages to become a blackened after killing someone, they will be allowed to leave unless they are caught. Meaning, I th meaning which I think we can deduce from this, being that, well, make sure you don't get caught killing somebody, I guess. And yes, I know exactly what it actually means, because I, as I mentioned in the last episode, I have played this game before to completion, so I know what all this shit actually means, but... I'm just, uh, ref I'm just using what information we have so far here, and make and drawing conclusions based on that, so I don't see it as me spoiling anything, so much as me... Essentially recalling my first, my, my, 
original thoughts when I played this for the first time, when going over these scenes again, because that's essentially what I, the same thing I ended up thinking back then too, was that, uh, well, I'm pretty sure what they mean by Rule 6 is, you get to graduate as long as no one catches you having k killed them, whoever the victim is. So yeah, you're talking about the second half, right? Where it says, unless they are discovered. I was wondering about that myself. Hmm. It's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But why? Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Well, I'm pretty sure there's got to be a good reason to, because, I mean, what happens if you get caught? That's what that rule doesn't explain. Just worry about following the rules as they've been explained to us. Such ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. <laughs> don't jab at me. It looks to me like you like the, the idea of being jabbed at, though. Give me a break. More like full on stabbed. Stab. Hmm. Well, for now, let's forget all that silky that silly junk about murders or whatever. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. True. We need to find out exactly where we are. Where exactly we are. Is there a, oh, any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions that we need to answer. Let's do it! Damn straight! Okay, let's all start looking around. Hm. I'll be going alone. Any reason for that, buddy? What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Hmm. Someone here might already have started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Well, I would argue it would actually be a lot harder for someone to try and uh, murder someone in a group because... Well, as long as the murder in question doesn't stab a vital area right away... They can be dis they can be restrained by other people within the group before they have a chance to do any more further damage, or even if they do any lasting further any da any damage, they'll end up getting someone killed. They will be in the middle of a group. They'll be caught. Therefore, they violate the exact conditions of Rule Six. So, it'd be in pretty much impossible for anybody to kill anyone because somebody would witness it. And there you go. Like, come on. I mean, I think it's I think it actually is would be smart to stick to a group. Especially if you can get everybody to stick together, that would probably that would obviously be the best solution. But I know we're not going to do that. So, hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. That would never what? Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. No one's denying the possibility, I think. I'm, uh, yeah, no one's, no one's really, well, I'm not denying the possibility anyway. I'm just simply saying here, if you really stop to think about it, sticking it to a group would be smarter. Because it'd be that much harder to get, to not get, it'd be that much harder to get, make sure you're not caught if you, if you do decide to kill somebody. That's why you all seized up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? But, hmm. so I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Okay then. Just hold on. Hold on. Like hell, I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever you want. What? Out of my way, Plankton. What? What? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Such ignorance. One tiny bit of Plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule. So insignificant. They couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. Ouch. You're fucking dead. I'm gonna kick your ass! Stop it! We shouldn't fight! What? The fuck you just say? You some kind of goody goody little bitch! You wanna throw down? Who do you think you are? Talking to me like that! You think you're you're th you think you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't! You son of a bitch! Fuck you! 
I got whammed. He punched me. And I flew back in a heap. It was like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just suddenly right there in my face. One second I was standing there. The next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I kind of forgotten. The kind of people I've been trapped here with. Yeah, I think you did. My common sense had just stopped functioning. Being all around these ultimates had blown my fuses. No, I think you were just being stupid. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. But I just lost track of that sense of reality. And I must also point out, Mondo's ultimate title is Ultimate Biker, is Ultimate Biker Gang Leader. So, I mean, last I checked, that doesn't necessarily equate to you needing to have a punch strong enough to send somebody flying across the room. Although I'm sure it would help being part of a gang. But I just... Okay, I just read that. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade. Before it finally cut out completely. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... A bedroom that's a lot more pleasing on the eyes. Huh? Where am I? Chapter 1, Time Unknown. We even got a little BGM radio thingy in the upper right corner. As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so... Where am I now? You now have access to the Eat the Handbook menu. You can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Indeed I do. So, I can look at the map, review the layout of Hope's Peak Academy. This will help guide you to specific locations throughout the school. Truth Bullets. Review evidence and witness accounts you've made a record of. So, remember what I said in the beginning of this episode about one of the reasons I had an interest I had an interest in this game to begin with was because it had some gameplay elements similar to Ace Attorney. Well, here's more of the, here's more stuff alluding to that. Presence. Review whatever personal belongings you have on you. And review report card. If you review the report cards for each student, helps peak. So we could just go look at this. Here we have me. Got my height, weight, chest, and special ability. Ultimate lucky, unlucky student. Okay, we got everybody's cards here. I'll just let you just pause and pause and just look at them if you're interested. Got regulations. Review the rules and regulations that must be followed in order to continue attending Hope's Peak Academy. So these are the rules that we went over earlier, so we really don't need to worry about this. And finally, we have system. All necessary functions for a proper school life have been provided here. So what this means is, here we can save our game, load it, we can look at a transcript. This will record all statements and events as they unfold to prevent any tampering in each case. So basically, think of it as like your uh, dialogue log in a visual novel. Like case in point. Be very useful if I end up uh, accidentally skipping over a line or two later on, and I'm pretty sure that's going to happen eventually. So that way I can go ba right back and reread it without having to, I don't know, reload a save or something. And we have options, adjust your environment for maximum comfort. And finally, we can return to the main menu. And we got a little coin icon in the upper left corner of the handbook with the number zero on there. Now what those are, you'll see soon, you'll see shortly. Open the handbook and 
Open the handbook and by pressing the X button. You can use this to check the school regulations and character info in the report card section. At certain points, map and truth bullets may not be available. You can also save and load game data under system section. Finally, press the back button to review the transcript. So, you can press the back button on your gamepad so you don't have to open up the handbook first and go to the transcript and system, so a lot faster and more convenient. This records all pertinent info, so use this to review comments from everyone involved. Okay, so why don't we get started by looking around the room we're in a bit first. It's a notepad. I guess the school must have given one to each of us. Well, at least we can write shit to each other. It looks like there's something in the drawer. It's a toolkit. It must be brand new. It's still in the shrink wrap. I don't really need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. But what if I want to build a bazooka? We could use that to blow, probably blow open the gate in the main gate, that big hatch in the main gate, maybe, or at least put a dent. And even, even if you couldn't bust out of here, why wouldn't you want to have a fucking bazooka if you could build one? So that way you could just say to somebody, Hey, I know how to build a bazooka. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. Is it to keep us all trapped in here? I, do, I believe we went over that earlier, so yes, obviously. It's a surveillance camera. I hate the idea that someone might be watching me right now. We're not allowed to mess with the cameras, so I better make sure I don't touch it. We got a lint roller here. It's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves? There doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange about the bed. Just as, it, just as it's bland as you are, Mr. Saltless Salting Cracker. SSC. This would appear to be the bathroom. I cannot open the bathroom door. Oh no. But what will I do if I have to go potty? Huh? It's not opening. I guess it's locked. Or to be more accurate, what are you going to do if you have to go use the restroom? Poor you. You're, I guess you're just gonna have to hold it in. Some kind of monitor. <sighs> Got a little note right here. There's a piece of paper hanging up on the wall, which says, Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lock picking. Remaking an individual room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at night time. Also, the bathrooms in the girls' rooms include a lock of their own. What, no lock for us guys? Finally, we prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. And for the boys, a tool kit. The sewing kit includes an, a map of the body's vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls. For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of the tools should be ample. But what if I want to build a bazooka and blow somebody up with that? Don't think, just feel. And let's all enjoy ourselves. I crumpled up the sheet of paper and threw it in the trash. But seriously, why don't we why don't we why don't us guys get a lock on our door? Well, apparently I seemingly have a lock, but why doesn't the, the guy why don't the guys get a lock on our door? I mean, some of us care about our privacy while we're in the lavatories too, you know. I mean, what if we have somebody over here in our rooms or or what have you? And I don't know. For some reason, they feel like peeping on us while we're on the john. I wouldn't tolerate that shit. No pun intended. Just an everyday trash can. I don't see any kind of trap door or hidden compartments or anything. All that's in the trash can is the paper I, wa I wadded up and threw away. Wadded up. I found a coin! 
So what is this coin exactly? This is what's referred to as a mana coin. Think of it as like the think of it as like this game's form of currency. You can use it to buy several things throughout the game. Now what can I buy with them? Well, we'll get to that soon. Anyway, this is the last thing I gotta look at. This must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain. Which means it must be mine, right? I better hang on to it for now. That covers everything, right? Looks like the store leads outside. It's locked. So some of the rooms have locks, huh? I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be... My room. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. This is my assigned dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. That was nice of them. So that answers that question. The next question is... What's everyone else up to right now? There's only one way to find out. And that's to get out of here. I agree. Let's leave. I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others. But there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Wham! Collision! <gasps> Don't you know it's dangerous to stand in front of people's doors? Oh. Sayaka? I could collide into you. Oh? So, oh, wait a minute, you're talking. Sorry, are you okay? I'm fine. I hope you're okay. Sorry about that. He had, she had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. Are you okay, Saika? Are you hurt? <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I actually built some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good then. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you? I'm sure I'll live. I've had a basketball hit me in the head once. From like 20 feet up. That's true. I got knocked right I got knocked right out there in front of everyone. Guess I revealed my lack of cool from the beginning. Lakoto. Lakoto? Oh uh, I'm fine. Nothing wrong here. That's good. Oh that's good. I was kind of worried. Thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me. What are you, Solid Snake? You just gotta repeat half of everything that people say to you? She did say she came to get you. Um, listen. Well, if you really are feeling better, I was hoping you could come to the dining hall. Dining hall? You see. After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. If everybody went to go and do their own thing, who the fuck carried me here? Dicks. We decided it'd be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we each found out. So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. That's good. Good. I'll go on ahead and meet you in the dining hall then. Wait a minute. Alright, here's my room. This is where I just came out of. My name and picture are on the nameplate. There's no reason for me to go back inside. Okay, and Saika is right next to us. Looks like there's some kind of nameplate. The doors themselves all look pretty much the same. They even have little pictures of us. Yoko is also my next door neighbor. 
clearly I'm into the spell, the, the dispel, the despair hotel. I tried to combine two words and it ended up sounding stupid. I apologize. This must be the dormitory dining hall. I see trees. Um. It looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, I guess that's not really important right now, with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much choice. I guess we should just wait here for now. Hmm. Okay, let's just wait here. Huh? You heard all that? Like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I have I just have amazing intuition. Is it really just intuition? It's kind of sudden, I know, but here comes the tutorial. Hello, green text. Right now, I'd like to talk about reactions. You're gonna be talking to Saika, right? Do you see anybody else here? What? Well, while you're talking to her, some purple words are going to appear. Here's how they work. I'm already on top of that. Oh! Are you familiar with reactions? Well, just in case, let me explain. I've just demonstrated I'm familiar with them! God damn! I'm not, st I'm not that dumb! When purple words show up, if you press the Y button, you're going to reaction mode. At this point, you can use the directional buttons to make a selection and the A button to confirm it. Also, when it comes to that dialogue, you can review whatever you talked about to look for more info. Talking to someone about things like this is called a reaction. Okay, do your best to enjoy your ever-important school life. Ah, have you gone ahead and used it already? Maybe it's your head that should be examined. You're very forgetful. Well, that's just wonderful. Make sure you keep it in mind as the story keeps on moving forward. Okay, Why, before I talk, I'll look around a little bit more. I'm not going to go wandering around. I'm just going to wait here patiently. Surveillance camera. Uh -huh. It helps to look around at various things in the environment whenever you can, just so you can find Monokuma coins. No, sorry, Mono coins, excuse me. So, even if there are objects that you've already explored, uh, well, examined before, even in other rooms, just be thorough. That's my advice to you. This is one of the monitors, okay. We already gone into that dialogue. Um, so, what time is it right now? I don't see any hands on the clock, so... What? Seven o'clock? At night? Uh, um... And now everything changed, and now our dialogue box changed to reflect that. You were unconscious for a pretty long time. I think he gave me a concussion. I see. Without being to look out at a window, I've lost all sense of time. If I have to stay in this place for too long, I might just go crazy. Maybe that's the point? Shame I can't look out there. Or apparently go out there for that matter. Wait a minute. You know, I never noticed. There is a dining table, some chairs outside that window, so there's gotta be a little side door that you could use to go well, in there. It's not out there, technically. Alright, let's chat. Hey, um. By the way, Makoto? Huh? What is it? Um. Well, it's just. I know this is kind of continuing the self introduction thing, but I want to ask you something. Okay, let's start with this. Continuing our self introductions. Uh, um. We kind of got cut off before, but I had a question I wanted to ask you. Saika wants to ask me something. I wonder what it is. Well, I'm really curious. And yes, you're just gonna cut off right hey, there. Um... So, what did you want to ask? What did you want to ask me? Hmm. Makoto, did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Were you maybe in class too? 
Yeah, actually. I was. <sighs> I knew it! I went there too. I was in class four though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. So yeah, you've known her since middle school. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was. That she remembered me. We never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. That's very interesting. Hey, um... Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah. I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. <laughs> we went to the same school for three years. Of course I remember. But he did just say you never even talked, so... How would you know him? Well, that's true. But there were lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm average at everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Well, what are your hobbies? Even normal would call me boring. You could be abnormal and still boring. Aww. If anything, you're abnormal with how bland you are, Sir Saltine Cracker. Saltless salting cracker. I keep forget. I forgot to mention that you don't have any salt, so you don't even have that going for you. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange. That. <laughs> she started giggling even louder. That somehow that somehow mysterious smile of hers made my heart grow calmer. Her smile was as nice a smile I'd ever seen. I don't know. I think Celeste could provide some healthy competition. Ow, ow, um, Owie's smiles could uh, also uh, be up there. Well, you know, if you don't mind the deception, the inherent deception behind Celeste's smiles. That's good. Anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about all this. You're amazing, Makoto. Well, if all I gotta do is just prick my ears up anytime you want to flap your gums. Very easy. No, I'm really not. I'm nothing at all compared to all you ultimates. Ain't that the truth. But you're the one that helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate students again. I, I, where did I get the again? Thank you for saying that. And to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. Well, aren't you lucky? Huh? My assistant? <laughs> yup. I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you out as much as I can. So let's get out of here together. Okay, so your first job as assistant will be... To bring me a cup of hot cocoa. Cocoa. When she says things like that, it it just gets me pumped up. Hey, um. I need chocolate to help me think. Not too much, because then you'll get fat. I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like he t almost like he timed it. Taka threw open the dining hall doors right as Saika said that. Hey. Ah, Makoto, Saika. So you two got here first, huh? How unfortunate. Too bad. I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just means I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Got it. Well, I won't give up. Next time, I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that... Everyone else came strolling in one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting. Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. Hold on a sec. What are you talking about? What's wrong? Hmm. What about, uh, what's her name? You know, the silver-haired girl. <gasps> uh, 
Oh yeah, Kyoko. I don't know. I don't know. Her hair looks like a lighter shade of purple to me. Lavender. Hmm. What about her? Aww. She's not here. Oh. What? I took another look around the dining hall. Sure enough, she was nowhere to be seen. Um. I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? But everyone just shook their heads. Huh? Wait, so nobody's seen her? Why hasn't Kyoko shown up yet? Could it be because... Yes, indeed! Well, two thoughts immediately popped in my mind. Number one, she could be lying dead somewhere. Or two, she could be occupied somewhere where no one else has... Where no one else has really followed her. Step. Uh huh. We already went over this. Is it possible? Was she really? No, no. I'm just overthinking things. Darn it, Kyoko! You're really going to be late like this on the first day of school? No, me. She late. No, no, she late. She didn't tell anyone she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. Come on. You're being a real jackass right now. You know that? <sighs> but what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare that the first session of the Hope Speak Academy briefing meetings has begun. Um... Makoto. Actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> you know. Huh? What's up? <laughs> I feel like I really have become your personal assistant. Don't you agree? <laughs> I may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. No. You've already done so much as my assistant. Okay. So. Let's get started on this little meeting of ours. Okay, so since you're in the dark about all this, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone's split up into investigate different parts of the building, but... You see... Byakuya, Byakuya and Taka each went off on their own, and so did Kyoko. Okay, let's start with Byakuya. I wanted to try and find some clue as to who is responsible for imprisoning us here. But unfortunately, I made no such discoveries. That's all from me. <sighs> Really? That's it? Hmm. If I'd uncovered anything, naturally I would have more to say. But I didn't. So I don't. Uh, right. Understood. You see. Now, next is Taka. I spent some time looking around the dormitory and... Listen to me! There I made the discovery the sentry! I found that there is exactly one room for each person! Well, yeah, I figured that out before anything else. Yeah. Each door already has a nameplate on, name on it, so I guess all the rooms have been assigned already. Huh. And each room key was attached to a keychain with the owner's name precision etched onto it. Which confirms that the room I was in earlier what is, in fact, my room. And plus... And Chihiro and I found out that all the rooms are totally soundproof. Soundproof, huh? Your next door neighbor could scream their lungs out and you wouldn't hear a thing. <laughs> well, then you better hope that you don't invite anybody in who would want to axe your faces off. Because, well, how the hell else would we be able to hear you? Well, each room also had a private bathroom, which could also lock. Hmm. But it looked like there were only locks on the bathrooms in the girls' dorms. Huh? But when I checked my bathroom door before, it totally definitely seems like it was locked. That's weird. I should double check that later. Did you forget the note we found earlier, Saltine Cracker? Hey, come on. Okay, so they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're gonna be here a while. Quiet down and listen! Well we well better to have than not. Better to have than have not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. That's all. That can't be all you have to report, K. 
can it, Mr. Honor Student? Got it! That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. Okay. Honor you Student has been has failed uh, failed to meet expectations, so let's move on. It looks like Leon, Hiro, and Junko, and, Sh and Shihiro are all grouped up together. We went all up and down the school, double checking the base, the windows, and all the hallways and classes. We wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off. And what happened was hmm. nothing, not a damn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge even a little bit. What should I do? There wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. Well, that just sucks. This is bad. This sucks. Don't steal my lines. Bad, 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 bad! It really sucks. It sucks, 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 sucks! I think I said one suck too many. I suck too much. What the hell are we gonna do? Hey, come on. God damn, calm down. You're starting to make me nervous. Next up is Hina, Sakura, and Mondo. Wait, I forgot to read your line there. Whatever, I'll get back to it soon. We thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we went looking all over. But we didn't find a thing. Sorry. Yo. I went back to the main hall, thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk of metal. What? But even with Sakura and me both, it wouldn't budge. We hit it with desks and chairs, and nothing. Ugh, shit. It was like, it was hard as like, metal. Astute observation, bugle hair. A metal door is as hard as itself. Metal. I, I would give you a gold star for that, but I don't have any. Yes, indeed. Well, yes, it is metal. This sucks. Anyway, if we're gonna get out of here, it's not gonna be through there. I feel like I could just cry. But no, I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. So then. I shall tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with communicating with the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. But there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way to open them, so we couldn't check it out. Hmm. In other words, at this point we are only able to search the first floor. However... We can further assume that there is potentially something above the second floor as well. If that's the case, there is a chance it may lead to a way out. A reasonable assumption. You see... The same goes for Hina, Sakura, and Mondo. Celeste, Toko, and Fumi were left over, so they joined up. Let's see. If I'm being honest, I can't quite say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in the gym. Useless, all three of you! Most unfortunate. How dare you? How dare you be useless? Honestly, we are not exactly the types to go running around the school like a gaggle of junior detectives. Got anything better to do? What the hell's wrong with you? What the hell were you thinking? Just sitting around the gym the whole time. <laughs> well, it's not like any of you invited me along. Nobody said, hey, come with us. You could have looked on your own. I blame you for leaving me out. It's your fault. Blaming others for your own ineptitude isn't going to help you, Toko. What the? If you wanted to go with someone, you should have just said something. <laughs> Forget it. Like I'd want to go anywhere with a dirty slut like you. You know, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make many friends with that kind of attitude, Toko. Huh? Slut? <laughs> your mouth is as thin as your body. You make me sick to my stomach. Are you for real? I... I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you just met? 
Well, if you're a bona fide bitch, you can say all kinds of mean shit to somebody you just met. Hey, come on. Act of life. All right, guys. Everybody, just calm down, okay? All this stress is bad for your skin, you know. Yeah. It sounds like you two are so close now, you're fighting like sisters. That's not what this is, Saika. I don't think that's what's going on, Saika. Hey, um... So that's what they have to say, huh? And I guess I'm the only one left. Okay, your turn. Um... I went and had a look around the dining hall. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen, and it was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. That's good. Guess we don't have to worry about food, at least. Sure, for now. But even if all of that, there are just 15 of us. How long can the food last? <laughs> you can just eat sesame seeds or something. Those aren't exactly very nutritious on their own. Huh? What am I, a parakeet? <laughs> well, you got the legs of a parakeet. I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food gets restocked automatically each day. Um, At least that's what Makuma said. Mm -hmm. You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge, told me that, then disappeared again. He was so fast, I can't believe someone could have been moving him around for remote control. Have you not seen remote control cars? How fast those things can move? That's... A weaponized toy can just appear from nowhere. I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. Um, I think it's obvious you should be at least mildly concerned. But... but what the fuck do I know? I know, I know ultimate whatever. But was everything okay? He didn't try to, like, eat you or anything? <laughs> eat her? What are you thinking? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you say eat... What kind of eating are we talking about? Get your get your needle bra needle brained head out of the gutter, man! This isn't a time for that. C come on, man! Hey, you bastard! What the hell, fatty? You're acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Actually, not like there's a, not like there's a good ch not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Hey! Hey! Stop screwing around, all of you! Are you still asleep or something? We're prisoners here. We could all just die any second. Duh, shit. She's right. We can't. We, we can't be making stupid jokes right now. Well, how else are we supposed to alleviate the tension, man? We gotta do something, or a voice cuts through the noise, interrupting Mondo. You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and carrying on. Hmm. Do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? I think deep down we all have. Yeah. Anyway, nice of you to join us. Kyoko! Where the heck have you been? We already started the meeting without you. She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the, on the table. Huh? What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? We already have one, though. What the? Where did you find this? Well, it doesn't matter where I found it. And why not? It does matter! You're really freaking us out right now! But more important... Never mind that. What's it mean? It would seem... Just look at it. The building you're in right now is laid out in precisely the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So that means we are. So that could mean two. We are essentially in an identical building then, in terms of layout. So what you're saying is, this really is Hope's Peak Academy. It's true. Well, in terms of its construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations. Well, have you looked around the place? Does it look any... Like, look at the main hall, for example. Did it look anything like how it did when you first entered? However... I don't know all the details yet. All I found was details about the first floor. Um... 
But then, this really is Hope's Peak. We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place. And if that's true, then well, somebody should kind of somebody should go complain to this to the uh, public school system or something. Or I guess Hope's Peak would technically be a private education, wouldn't it? Or government? No, it's government funded. So I don't know the government. Huh? So stupid, it's not even possible. This is where the country's future leader is supposed to come and learn. But but if this really is Hope's Peak. Where are all the other students? Uh, hey, come on, guys. We just stop talking about all this, you know, negative stuff. But aren't you worried? Things don't look things don't look good. Yo. Worried? What's there to be worried about? I mean, this is all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope's Peak put all this together, right? <laughs> Man, if I got stressed every time something like this happened. I'd have ectoplasm shooting out of my mouth. You know? Good things come to those who wait, right? So we just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. <laughs> What's your problem? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I am just happy, that is all. It seems splitting up to investigate was a good idea after all. <sighs> Haven't you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time. We didn't find a way out. Didn't find who's behind this. We still have no idea what's going on. We do know what's going on. We're locked in a place that seems to strongly resemble Hope's Peak in terms of construction. And there's a and there's an obviously psychotic monochrome bear that wants us to entertain it. Preferably, undoubtedly, by killing each other. Oh. Huh? Is it not crystal clear to you what is going on? Are you okay with this? Is it perfectly obvious that we've been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out? That is a, that is a creepy face you got there. None of us had any response to that. We didn't want to accept that reality, but it was staring us right in the face. <laughs> didn't have to go and say that. Try not to think about it. Well, you gotta wake up and smell the coffee sooner or later. No way out. We're trapped here. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Stop it. Don't even joke about that! Um... Everyone just calm down, please. We need to stop and think about what to do from here. Seems like... There's gotta be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Adapt to our living uh, to living our lives here from now on. That's... Live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? If you don't want any blood on your hands, then yes. Do you understand? A lack of adaptability is a lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is the strongest or the smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. Well, I would say having strength and smarts does help. Actually, as someone who has come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. We all understand that we're trapped here, which means we will be spending the night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so exercise caution. And sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class, punched accordingly. Let's see. So regarding this nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> Going out at nighttime should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night. I would like to make it official. Huh? But why? Are you okay with this? The way things are now, every t every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. Mm -hmm. We will all be afraid someone might try and come kill us. What? But I would also argue that um, 
Following a rule like this would, in essence, plant further seeds of doubt amongst all of you regarding each other. So, I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword here to me. <laughs> if we have to worry about the, that, uh, if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity at night as a kind of preventative measure. Indeed. I mean, yeah, I ultimately agree that this idea is the best one, but I mean, I'm just trying to point out here, it's not exactly flawless. I mean, you should keep in mind what it might, what kind of thoughts it might spark in some people. Maybe not all of you, but some of you. However, unlike the other rules, nobody can be forced to comply. We all have to agree to follow it. What can we do? I see what you mean, but I think I can agree to that. It's like it's like the it's like the little Gothelita said. Without something like that, we're just gonna self-destruct. Listen to me! On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply. I didn't vote for you. What? Hey, you can't just decide to speak for us. This is fine. So everyone is in agreement? Good. <laughs> then, if you'll excuse me. Huh? Huh? Wait, where are you going? Let's see. It is almost nighttime. No, it is nighttime. Look at the upper left corner. I want to take a shower before it arrives. I hope you are well. So, goodbye. Moving with pure elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Her behavior seemed so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone even trying to stop her. Um... So, I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We'll be spending the night, it looks like. Huh. Adaptability. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, what next? One person already left. <laughs> um. Well then, let's say let's say we call an end to today's meeting. You understand? Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Huh? Do we really have to stay the night here? Well, I'd say so. Yeah. What we got nowhere we else we can go. We don't have a choice. We can't go. We can't go for long without getting some sleep. <sighs> this sucks. So we have to just give up. <sighs> I'm gonna shave your head, Bugle Hair. Mark my words. That's all fine and good for today. But what do we do tomorrow? So in the end, our only option is to split up and look around again, and let everyone know if we find anything. <sighs> Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Aww. Then we're done for today. Good. I'm exhausted. With heavy movements, everyone headed off to their private rooms. Um... Kodo, are you ready to call it a day? Yeah, let's go. I wonder what that bed is made of. I hope it's memory foam. Preferably the cooling type. Is this really where I'll be staying for the foreseeable future? Oh, that's right. I should check the bathroom one more time before I go to bed. Only the girls' bathrooms should have locks on them, right? Apparently. Alright, let's open it up. It's no use. It really is locked. Bzzzt. Bzzzt. Wrong. Not locked. Holy crap! Jeez, talk about an overreaction. It's like you just saw a ghost or something. Like some kind of robot bear ghost. What are you doing here? What? Makoto Nayegi, this is super duper majorly bad. So bad, it's almost magical! Ultra magical, awful, awful attack! Uh huh. In point of fact, I acknowledge that the bathroom in your room has a problem with the door frame. Wait, so the reason it won't open isn't because it's locked? The door just doesn't fit? Hey, um. Didn't you see the notice? What? Can't you read? Apparently, he can't. Me, though, I am perfectly capable. 
The bathrooms in the boys' rooms don't have locks. I mean, a lock on a boy's bathroom is kind of pointless, don't you think? No! Like I said earlier, uh, some some of us guys do mind our privacy, especially when we have company over. We don't we just want people walking in while we're on the toilet. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Well, it's not that it's well, it's not that it's pointless, I guess. But I'm no expert on the birds and bees and all that. You know, I'm sure that um, most of, um, you know, I'm sure that if uh, anybody wanted to mess around the birds and bees in a place like this. Most of them wouldn't just do it in their bathrooms. They would just do it on, you know, their beds. Listen up. Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this particular ill-fitting door. And that's what I'm here to teach you. Okay, ready? So you just gotta turn the doorknob, then lift it up while you pull. Yes, indeed. Go ahead. Give it a try. Turn the knob and lift the door up while I pull. When I did that, the door opened without a problem. <laughs> <laughs> See? It opened right up! Isn't that crazy, though? Your door is the only one that doesn't fit quite right. And my first thought what, when I, during all this was, you did this just to fuck with me, didn't you? Because I'm the ultimate lucky student. <laughs> you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But it looks like you're not lucky at all! Anyway, I suddenly don't feel like being here anymore. Bye! Hey! Wait! Damn it. I'll get my revenge on you someday, bear. Now I'll make sure your door won't properly fit. Somebody get me a hammer. <clears throat> a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially soon the oh, doors shit. to the dining hall will be locked and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. I tried to just I tried to disable the auto uh, scroll the auto uh, play thing, but I ended up hitting a skip button. So, sorry about that. Okay then. Sweet dreams everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Looks like it's night time. We all promised we wouldn't leave our rooms now. All I can do is try and get some sleep. While still mumbling to myself, I collapsed into bed. Aren't you gonna shower first, man? My eyes closed almost immediately. It's not that I was ready for bed exactly. I was just utterly exhausted. It was as if I'd spent an entire day staring at a TV watching movies. Or like some kind of illusion where I'd been tossed into a made-up fantastical world. Yeah, that feels about right. There's no easy way to accept the situation we've suddenly been dropped into. So this is how the curtain closed on my first day at Hope's Peak Academy. Soon enough, I was asleep. Would it be too much to hope that when I woke up, I'd realize it was all a dream? It's kind of lame as far as endings go, but I'd be fine with that. Actually, that'd be the best. No such luck, my friend. Monokuma Theater. In any normal school, Mr. Monokuma would be a kind teacher. But when I think about what's coming up, I'm just so full of pride and joy. Our ceremony earlier today was absolutely splendid. Thank you all very much. Remember that you're all students of Hope Speak Academy and strive to refine your ideals. I swear to you, I will send you all off into a new tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! 
What day? There's no sky. Apparently it's morning. But thanks to the total lack of windows, there's no way to know for sure. Anyway, what should I do now? Maybe I should go find Saika, and we can figure out where to go from here together. She did say she's my assistant now. Okay, it's decided. I'm gonna head to her room. With a newfound determination, I left my room. Okay. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut things off here for now. And I will uh, continue exploring the school again in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Danganronpa Trigger, ha Trigger Happy Havoc. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.